Hi everyone, it's Gus from Pi My Life Up. Today I'm going to be making a simple Raspberry Pi Minecraft server. I have had one running for a while now, and whilst it can't handle many people, uh, about 3 to 5, it is a cool way to get a mini server going for you and your friends. Or if you just want a server to stuff around with. First up, we will need to install Raspbian onto the Raspberry Pi. If you haven't already done this, then check out my awesome guide on installing Raspbian onto the Pi here. In this tutorial, I will be using the Spigot server, as this seems to be much more stable than the vanilla server. It is super easy to set up, and I will take you through how to do it now. But first, let's bring Raspbian up to the latest version by entering the following commands. sudo apt get update and once that is done, enter sudo apt get upgrade. Now we need to make a few changes to the config, so enter sudo raspy config. First let's go to advanced options, and then go to memory split. Update this to 16. Now also go into overclocking and change this to high. You can set this higher if you want, but I'll keep it at high for now. Finally, if you haven't enabled SSH, you should do this now just in case you need to access the server remotely. Now go to finish and reboot. Once that's rebooted, we should get the IP address for when we want to access the server later. To get the IP address of the Pi, enter sudo hostname dash capital I. Next, we need to install Java as the Minecraft server requires it. To do this, we will need to get it from a Java website. Now this is a really long command, so I recommend pausing this video or heading over to pymylifeup.com and copying it off there. Once that is done, you will need to run the following command to unzip the file into the opt folder. To check that it has unzipped properly and is usable, run the following command. sudo slash opt slash jdk 1.8.0 underscore 60 slash bin slash java dash version. It is also likely that Java has updated since this video, so the version number after jdk might be different. Now we need the Minecraft server file. We're going to use a builder tool that is supplied by Spigot. To get this, enter the following commands. sudo mkdir slash home slash minecraft cd slash home slash minecraft sudo wget then the URL to the build tools. Once it has downloaded, let's run the build tools by entering the following command sudo slash opt slash jdk 1.8.8 underscore 60 slash bin slash java slash dash jar build tools dot jar now the builder tool will take about 15 to 30 minutes to complete so it takes a while you will need to do this every time you update the server now use the ls command to make sure the spigot jar is there if it is then everything has worked correctly now make sure you remain in the slash home slash minecraft folder as we want all the server files to be created in here. If you start the server in a different folder it will create the files in there. Now we're ready to launch the minecraft server. The following command is for the pi 2. Check pi my life up for a command for the previous versions of the pi. sudo slash opt slash jdk 1.8 underscore 60 slash bin slash java dash xms 512m dash xmx 108m dash jar slash home slash minecraft spigot dash 1.8.8 dot jar no GUI. Now it will stop straight away as you will need to agree to the ULA. You can do this by opening the ULA by typing sudo nano ULA dot txt. Change false to true. Now relaunch it by using the same command. It will take a while to create the map, so give it about 3 to 5 minutes. If you ever reboot, it will only take about 30 seconds to load the map, as it would already have been created. The server should now be running and accessible over the local network. Let's give it a quick test before we go on to optimizing the server. The server may display in the list of local servers available, but if it doesn't, just enter the IP so you can directly connect. And yep, I've connected and entered the world. So that's working fine. 
So to get the most out of our server, we would want to optimize it a little so it could run even better. To do this, let's go back to our terminal and stop the server by entering stop. Firstly, let's install the node spawn chunks plugin. This will help prevent the Minecraft server from chewing up too much RAM. So first, let's go into the plugins directory by typing cd dot slash plugins and now simply use the wget command to get the no spawns chunk jar so sudo wget http dev dot bucket dot org media slash files slash 586 slash 974 slash no spawn chunks dot jar there are other plugins out there that can help with performance, so simply use the wget command to download them to a Pi, just like we did before. Now, you probably want to know how to edit the server properties. This is very important for, again, optimizing the server and customizing it to how you want the server to be. So first, let's go back down to our Minecraft folder by entering cd dot dot forward slash. To enter the server properties, enter the following sudo nano slash home slash minecraft slash server dot properties you can change these however you would like but keep in mind the pi can't handle too much so i'm just going to set max players to five and view distance to four now let's quickly test that the server will launch without any issues yep it is all good so let's stop it again and we'll move on to making a nice short script to boot the server. Enter the following command to create the file. sudo nano slash home slash minecraft dash start dot sh. In here, simply add the following line so that the Minecraft server will start correctly. Hashtag explanation mark slash spin slash bash cd slash home slash minecraft event our startup command. Once done, press Ctrl X, then Y to save and exit. Let's quickly just test the script to make sure it is working. Enter the following command, sudo bash slash home slash minecraft dash start dot sh. And yep, the server starts up just fine. If you want the server to start back up automatically on reboot, then we will need to simply add it to the rc.local file. To do this, enter the following, sudo nano slash etc slash rc dot local in here add the following line before the exit line bash slash home slash minecraft dash start dot sh now the server should automatically start when you reboot the pi so let's give this a quick test simply enter sudo reboot so we can test to see if the server is running by trying to connect via Minecraft after about 5 minutes as it will take some time for the server to start up. Or you can check by entering the following command. Now this command will return two results and you only need to pay attention to the first. Now if you need to kill the process you can get the process ID from the above command. The first number after the username is the PID. So in order to kill it, you simply enter kill then the PID number. This will kill the server and it will no longer be accessible. I hope this tutorial has helped you in setting up a stable version of the Raspberry Pi Minecraft server. Feel free to drop us a comment below or over at pymylifeup.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for something new to do? Check out these awesome 21 Raspberry Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.